Lots of drama going on in the luxury world. Everybody, my name is Laura and welcome to my channel. If you love luxury, handbags, fashion, shopping, this is definitely the channel for you. So don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you are notified whenever I have a new video come out. And right now I'm getting my videos out hopefully every Tuesday and Saturday. Ooh, so let's start with go. what is going on with Chanel and what goes around comes around. So if you've been living in a bubble and haven't heard, Chanel sued what goes around comes around back in 2018. So back in January, the case actually went to trial, lasted about a month, and the jury sided with Chanel and therefore they were ordered to pay Chanel $4 million in damages. However, right now, what goes around comes around and says that this is not over. So we shall see what happens. So what started all of this to do um, with what goes around comes around, who has been around for about 30 years. Um, they are a luxury reseller who has pretty much made their business selling um, vintage and pre-loved Chanel handbags. So Chanel claims that what goes around comes around was using um, their logo and the name Coco on their advertisements. They were also, I guess, using um, the word Coco in some of their promotional um, discount codes, which was, they said, leading the consumer to think that there was some type of affiliation with Chanel, which there is not. Um, Chanel also saying that, um, that only Chanel can actually authenticate a handbag um, and that at times, I guess, what goes around comes around was actually saying that the bags were, in fact, um, authenticated by Chanel. So they were saying that was another misleading of the consumer. So Chanel was also um, in a little bit of a uproar about them selling pieces that were not intended for sale things that were given away at fashion shows and also um, gifts that were given to clientele for say spending a ton of money. So in other words, you know, they probably for spending, you know, $500,000 in their store gave them like a little keychain or a wallet or something, you know, some kind of swag. Anyway, um, the people who had these items, well, they didn't want them. So they wanted to sell them. And what goes around comes around had these items. So I don't know really how that is breaking the law, but okay. They also claimed that it was unfair competition. Unfair competition because they are selling, I guess, so many of their bags and doing so well that it ticked them off, I guess. And the jury sided with Chanel, what goes around comes around, had to pay them four million dollars in damages and two four counts, which were um, the trade infringement, false association, unfair competition, and false advertising. Okay, I don't know. Um, I tend to see the competition thing as uh, I don't know about that. I mean, they didn't open a Chanel boutique. You know, I, Chanel does not like the resale market. We all know that. Either does Hermes, and I, I'm not sure Louis Vuitton's too fond of it either, but Chanel hates, I'm pretty sure I can say that, hates the resale market. Okay, so if you hate the resale market and you see a market that's doing really well, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to get mad and you're going to stomp your feet and you're going to want to stop it. And that, in essence, I think is what they're really doing here. Um, there were some of these um, swag items, whatever you want to call them, free gifts. Well, these items were not 
in the database as far as the codes that come on the bags. You know, there's always the little, the little codes on there, the serial numbers to authenticate it. Well, these specific items did not have those. So those bags um, were considered then not real because Chanel said we can't authenticate them. But what goes around comes around said, well, you deleted them in your database. So how can we? So it, it, it kind of like this little vicious cycle. Um, they were accused of, I believe, 13 bags were um, found to be counterfeit. Do we know? I don't know. So to me on this whole issue, okay, Chanel hates the counterfeits. Um, they hate the resale market. They pretty much hate the world right now. Um, but if they are so adamant on stopping these things, why don't they just join in? You know, the old adage, if you can't beat them, join them. So why not take control of the resale market? Even have their own resale website, which I know they'd hate to do because it would cannibalize their new boutique sales, which they don't want to do because that's where they make all their money. But if they were to even think about and consider joining forces into the resale market, they would be able to authenticate the bags themselves and control whether a bag is counterfeit or not. To me, that seems like a reasonable and probably a smart thing to do, but we know that Chanel will not do that. They just won't. So with their price increases, again, yes, they did it again in 2014. They're doing it every year. Um, so if you were in, which one of their stores is what goes around, comes around, is in Soho. So if you're walking down the street in Soho, New York, and you um, want a Chanel bag and you pass a boutique that maybe has the bag for, let's just say, I don't know, 8000 throw it out there. But you can walk across the street or down the street to a what goes around, comes around, and maybe get that bag similar, maybe a little bit older, um, for, say, six. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Realistically, I mean, what would you do then? People want to save money now. And the resale market as a whole is a deeply ingrained trend right now. Okay, it's a big trend. But Chanel, Hermes, and of course LVMH refuse to join in on this because they want to remain control, control of their brand. I can see Arno as being a very controlling person. I don't know why. But they want to maintain control of everything. I get it. You want to maintain your 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 trademark, your name. You, it's taken you, you know, 20, 30 years to get this exclusivity that you have, and now you don't want to let it go. But there comes a point when you're going to have to step up to the times and start. Otherwise, you're going to run into all these issues like they have right now. And, you know, who knows? And they also um, had filed a lawsuit against the Real Real, started back in 2018 as well. That has yet to be seen. So if that happens, what is going to be going on with the resale market? I mean, are we just not going to see Chanel on the resale market anymore? Um, are are platforms that do resell going to be afraid to have these bags because they're going to be sued? Um, so what's going to happen? I mean, it's all Chanel makes it so, it, and I get it. It, it. That's their plan is they want to go back to selling to the ultra rich people um, who have the means to get these bags. They want that exclusivity. But if you, if you can even afford a bag and you're not near a boutique, I'm not anywhere near a boutique and I'm, well, I have to drive like three hours and I'm in Florida. I don't have one even in Arizona, anywhere, anywhere. So if I do want a Chanel bag and they don't sell them online, what am I going to do? I have to fly to a boutique somewhere or wait till I go to Vegas and maybe get a bag. 
But people that, that, that don't have that luxury, they shop online on the pre-love market. And I always tell you guys to shop on the pre-love market anyway to save money. It makes no sense to walk in there and pay the brand new price and taxes and everything else and walk out the door and lose money on the bag. Okay? Makes no sense. So, I don't know. Chanel, to me, is being a little bit of, um, maybe a little bit of a crybaby here. I don't know. I'm just starting to, you know, I used to kind of stick up for Chanel, but now I'm just like, ugh, really? Join in and help out, okay? If you're so against all this and you want to stop counterfeiting, which, by the way, probably isn't going to end anyway because you keep raising your prices and people can't afford your shit. So we um, be part of the solution. They want to be part of the problem. So let's real quick talk about Farfetch before we get too far into this, guys. So Farfetch um, has recently lost. Um, Hearing is no longer going to, they cut their contract with them, as well as Neiman Marcus. And Neiman Marcus was letting them kind of control their um, Bergdorf Goodman app that they had. So that's going to be no longer. So Hearing will no longer be having their bags sent there. They, they will now be sold through like a th third party. You're still going to see Gucci, Bottega, Laurent, all those on there, but they're going to be sold by a third party. So they have a whole mess going on there. They are laying like 30% of their staff off. Um, their founder and CEO, um, Neves has stepped down um, and they're also um, kind of looking into there's a whole mess with him um, once upon a time wanting to buy um, part of Netta Porter um, and then he claims you know that he was you know on the verge of bankruptcy and then um, he suddenly made this deal with, with a South Korean company Coupang. Now um, the owner of Coupang is now running Farfetch and it's kind of Interesting how the entire board, and including the founder, Neves, and the CFOs, and the they all, all members of the board all stepped down at one time, which is kind of interesting. So after Neiman's and Caring decided to pull, um, <laughs> something else happened to them. So they were um, hit with a, um, a lawsuit, actually um, a winding up petition by the Wilmington Trust. The winding up petition is saying that they want the company liquidated in order to get their payment of $404 million. They have this going on, but plus something else. So there has also been, also been um, class action filed um, on alleged securities fraud. Um, the CEO, which is Jose Neves, and the CFO, which was Elliot Jordan, and the president, Stephanie Fair, the, the, the suit's been filed against them for security fraud. So I, I don't even know the future of Farfetch right now. I don't even know if I'd, I would just look away. I would just look away. Uh -uh. Lots of turmoil right now in the, in the resale market. Um, who knows? Um, but you know, I'm not going to fret. I'm still going to purchase on the resale market. Um, I just want to give you guys a little bit of the fun stuff that goes on in the luxury world because there is always drama. We know that. So will things be changing in the near future on the resale luxury market? Um, who's to say, who's to say what's going to happen in 2024? There is always something going on. Stay positive for now. I just wanted to share that little tidbit of news for you guys so you are aware of it. Oh, I know. Yeah. So anyway, guys, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, um, I appreciate everybody so far who has subscribed to the channel. Greatly appreciate all of you guys. Um, and if you will, leave a comment and let me know um, what kind of videos you guys like. If you like this kind of video or not, or if you just want to stick to um, show and tell or what you um, would like to see, because it's important to me to give you guys what you want. So until next time, guys, I will talk to you later. Bye.